consistency and yield, and you know how important I think the latter is, may I suggest that you think about longtime Kramer fave Six Flags. Here's a company that's the largest theme park operator in the nation, 18 parks across North America, and it's no longer just a summer story. So it's no wonder that when Six Flags reported its so-called winter quarter this morning, the company earned two cents a share when Wall Street was looking for a three cent loss. Boy, I thought that was terrific. The revenues came in much higher than expected, up 18% year over year. Beyond that, Six Flags saw a terrific 22% increase in attendance. That's not just double digits. That's huge. And at these levels, the stock gives you a nearly 4.5% yield. That's why we want to check in with Jim Reed Anderson, the CEO and soon-to-be executive chairman, not chairman, but executive chairman, staying on Six Flags, as well as John Duffy. He's the company's CFO and incoming CEO. Learn more about the quarter and what's next for the company. Mr. Reed Anderson, Mr. Duffy, welcome to welcome back and welcome to Mad Bunny. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Right. I don't like the bird the leap. Uh, last thing that you had to say on your conference call was, re- remember, I remain one of the top investors in the company. I'm confident that our highly talented team will continue to deliver tremendous results and that you have had an eightfold increase since the day you started. So congratulations. Thank you, Jim. And you will be staying on and still have an office and be able to, to help John. Not that you necessarily needs it, but you'll be there. Yeah, John Litt needs very little help because he's an amazing executive, but I am staying on. I'm going to be the executive chairman. I'll have a focus on bigger strategic issues, um, including, you know, governance of the company and M&A and areas like that. But I have to tell you, uh, Jim, you know, after our sixth record year, and we're set up for what I think will be a seventh record, this is a great time to be able to hand over leadership to an amazing person, John Duffy, and Marshall Barber, who will step up as, as the CFO. Excellent. Well, John, let me go to you. You actually had a great moment at the conference call. You said uh, you would, when we were talking about how uh, the company does, it's not just like July and August, you were answering one question. You said, I had actually had to visit Great Atten- Adventure during holiday in the park. It was 30 degrees and the park was packed. How is that possible? Well, you know, we've made uh, substantial investments in uh, both our Fright Fest offering in October and our Holiday in the Park offerings in, in December. And, Jim, that's one of the reasons why, you know, now, if you think about the fourth quarter, years ago, it used to be part of the off-season. Right. And, you know, now it's, it's a uh, major contributor to our financial performance. As a matter of fact, just five years ago, it was a, a quarter that generated – a EBITDA loss, and now we just generated $62 million of EBITDA with $5 million in attendance, which is roughly 20% of our overall attendance for the year. So, you know, it's just been a, a great uh, performance, and we continue to invest in both those, those uh, franchises, particularly in, in Holiday in the Park, where we'll open it to even more parks going forward. Now, uh, the company is more levered at this point to your past but also to new rides. And uh, in your pre- excellent presentation, Best is Coming 2016, Six Flags New England, Six Flags Discovery. They all seem to have a, a refresher that is some very exciting stuff. And that's what really is the fulcrum of your numbers. That's a, a, absolutely correct. And, and for us, it's, it's all about innovation and having something new and exciting that you can go out and, and market at every single one of our parks. And that's what the strategy that we have put in place for a few years now. And I can tell you that 2015, was a phenomenal year in terms of our our new product offerings. But 2016 is our best yet. As a matter of fact, it's the best product lineup that we've had in a decade. Now, is that because it's the scariest, the most difficult? I mean, because I know that the ones I've been on are so scary, but my kids don't regard that. What is the twist? Because some of them seem also for little little kids. Well, it's actually a balance. It's some very exciting roller coasters, thrill rides, but also family rides. So... For us, it's a nice balance between, you know, 50% of our tenants is teens and 50% is families. So we want to make sure that it stays balanced and we continue to keep our guests happy and keep coming back to the park. Right. Jim, you, you came up with the idea basically of the past, which gives you that great cash flow. And, and, and that also uh, it leads to some more spend in the parks. These are all both going in the right direction right now. They're absolutely going in the right direction. We've seen tremendous growth in our active pass base both of season pass holders, members. And in fact, you know, John was very proudly telling everyone this morning that our active pass base was up 26% at year end. Very strong, building on the best product lineup in our history, Jim. Well, it's definitely true. Now, John, uh, you make no bones about it, you, although you know I feel otherwise, that it's not, a, it's not a play on cheap gasoline. At the same time, you are 80 miles from my house. And I know that uh, if it costs half as much to get there, I can spend half more when I get to the park. So there's obviously a spare change prospect. It's not what you base the story on, though. 
That, that's correct. So, you know, we've looked at a lot of historical data around, you know, uh, gas trends and gas prices and, and the correlation with the uh, tenants. And approximately 80% of our tenants comes from within 100 miles of our park. But, Jim, you're absolutely right. I think what it does is it puts more money in people's pockets. So when they come to the park, they're spending a little bit more. And that's obviously helped us in terms of our, our, the, the uh, guest spending within the park. And last question, I, I want to give it to, to you, Jim. Um, fall and winter, how did you know that it would work? I mean, when I first heard about it, I said, geez, it's chilly, it's cold. I don't know if I want to do it. How did you know? It's, you know, in, in many cases, it's a matter of belief. And I think we have the best team in the industry, Jim. And there was a strong view that we had a franchise in Fright Fest, which is the Halloween event, right. that we could build on. And we have just gone through the roof there. And then the view that we could take it further using our active passes to be able to expand into holiday in the park or Christmas events. And that has been amazing, just amazing. And it will continue to grow. I feel very strongly about that. Well, I want to congratulate you on that Thank incredible you. run that you've had. John, I wish you the best. You know I care tremendously about what you guys have done. That's Jim Reed Anderson, Six Flags CEO, now named executive chairman. And John Duffy, CFO, was the incoming CEO. Stay with Six Flags. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.